What is going on, everybody? Before we get into this week's podcast, I just want to take a second to thank you. Yeah, you. I want to thank everybody who's been listening to the podcast up until this point. We've 10 episodes in the bag now. This is episode number 11. And to be honest, it's been going really, really well. And the feedback has been absolutely super. The whole point behind starting this podcast for me was to bring as much value to my life and to my listeners' lives as possible with all of the guests that we bring on who have been absolutely fantastic so far, sharing their stories, their knowledge, their expertise to help us with our heads, with our happiness, with our motivation, with our purpose, with our health, every single aspect of our lives that we can improve. And I think personally that it's worked so far because I've learned loads from this podcast. Um, So thank you. Thank you for being a part of the journey. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your comments. Um, and it really helps keep the motivation, keep my motivation going for recording these podcasts. So I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to show your support, please make sure you're subscribed on any of the platforms that you're listening on. And give us a five star, if you think I deserve a five star rating, give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts. Because let's be honest, it helps push the podcast up the ratings and helps expose it to more people. Which means we can keep doing it and keep bringing in good guests and offering more value. Which is the point at the end of the day. Now, that's the housekeeping done. My guest on the podcast today is Maria Connolly. I met Maria several years ago through a mutual friend, and immediately I knew that this was somebody who taught about health and wellness, happiness and fulfillment the same way that I do. And Maria was on her own journey of self-discovery and self-improvement at the time. Over the last year or so, we've had so many conversations together about so many different aspects of life and health that it was a no-brainer for me to ask Maria to come on the podcast to share her story and her expertise. Maria is a qualified nutritional therapist and Wim Hof breeding instructor. And in this episode, she talks to me about her own personal journey, what inspired her to get involved in the world of health and wellness, and how she helps other people understand their own happiness, their relationships with food, their relationships with themselves and other people, and to build their own tools, which will help them work towards their own happiness and health. I really enjoyed speaking to Maria today, as I do every single time we have a conversation. This one just happened to have microphones on, and it really brought a lot of value to the table, so I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to our shared journey to find the answers to questions about health, wellness, nutrition, performance, life, and success, and to craft the most resilient, hardy, and happy humans you've ever seen. Welcome to the Primal Podcast. Okay, so welcome back to the Primal Podcast. I'm here today with Maria Connolly. Maria, thanks very much for joining me. Hello, Dan. Thank you for having me. Uh, No, it's absolutely my pleasure. Um, So, Maria, I'm going to give people a bit of a background Mm -hmm. into our relationship, I suppose, first, because we do know each other. Uh, We met through a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. Big shout out to to Stephen. (laughs) Good man, Stephen. Um, But (laughs) since we met, it was very clear that our minds were tuned the same way, if you want to call it that. And every time we have a conversation, we get more and more and more excited about... The, the things we discuss. Um, obviously, I started this podcast to talk to people like you. Yep. Um, and it's a, a bonus that we happen to be friends as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but for people who may not know Maria Connolly and what mm-hmm. you do, um, I know, obviously, you have a background in nutrition. You're, you're into um, breathing and Wim Hof. You're mm-hmm. an instructor. You have all sorts of different interests and expertise. Um, but would you mind giving us a little bit of background on who you are mm-hmm. and what exactly it is that you do, the services you do, and why you started this journey of kind of self-care and teaching and therapy and all those different mm-hmm. kind of things? Okay, yes. Yeah, so my name is Maria Connolly, for anyone that doesn't know. Um, so my story, I was adopted from Romania um as a baby i was in an orphanage and i was adopted by two irish people grew up in lusk between lusk and scaries and um i suppose being adopted is a big part of my story because i kind of was ignoring the fact that i that i was adopted and it didn't have any effect to me and i did feel like deep gratitude for being adopted but then as i got older you know um i just was becoming more sick uh, more autoimmune diseases start coming up um, and I was like oh kind of just really unaware of you know why that was I just you know I was told in the hospital oh, it's just a skin thing it's just this it's just that um, nothing to do with your diet nothing to do with your lifestyle but then as I got older I actually realised um, 
our body holds on to like a lot of trauma, a lot of stress, even things uh, as we're babies, you know, and it, it's stored in the body basically. And as soon as I start to acknowledge that, I suppose not to feel like a victim because I just feel like deep sense of gratitude for being adopted that, um, you know, that is trauma being in the orphanage, being separated from the mother uh, as a child. So, you know, as soon as I started to acknowledge that and work on that, things started to kind of like really change for me. Um, so from a young age, um, I always had psoriasis kind of, but, you know, I went to the hospitals and the doctors for years and they said, just a skin disease, you know, like here's steroid creams, um, here's a, this medication, whatever. I was very unaware at that time and I was just like, yeah, whatever. Um, but it always came back. It didn't really like get to the root of the problem. And then a good few years ago, um, I suppose this is where, where it all started. Uh, I was going out with a guy and I really, really like loved his mother, had a great relationship with her. And which is unusual. I, yeah, no, I love I love the I love the mothers, but um she she kind of discovered that um cutting out sugar and grains for a short period of time had like a huge effect on her health. Um she lost like a lot of weight, she had like pain in her like shoulder that completely went away. Um like just a ton of these health benefits and she had been kind of conditioned with that low fat kind of like diet the low fat kind of culture thought ba- fat was bad for you and it was just incredible to see her transition and she started to do more research into it and sh- you know I'm not going to get into this because I just kind of like let it go but like basically all the corruption and lies that were told around nutrition and nutritional science is so hard to kind of like prove or disprove, you know, yeah. and kind of just like let that go. But there, there is uh, like every industry, you know, a lot of dodgy kind of questionable things that go on. Bullshit. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And I kind of got a bit, kind of an unhealthy way, a bit obsessed about it. And I was like, why are we told all these lies? You know, why why is this? Why is that? And when I was going to the hospital uh, for my psoriasis, and at this point I had... Um, uh, cerratic arthritis as well so wow, okay. yeah very bad joint pain and I was only in my early 20s yeah. and I was like hmm but you know talking to the consultants um, they're like yeah it's nothing to do with your diet um, it's just there's nothing you can do about it here's here's a medication it may or may not work <laughs> <laughs> I was like <laughs> you know in my head I was like uh, I kind of I like I read this thing about like how diet can help and you know how it might be like something deeper or they were like no there's there's no research to support that eat whatever you want this old chestnut yeah um so I was like I didn't really have like any educate like I suppose formal education in it so yeah. I didn't have the confidence to argue with it but in my head I just felt like there was something something missing something missing I was like. So I didn't really do much, to be honest, for the next couple of years. Um, I just still ate like a really, really poor diet, uh, whatever I wanted, basically. And then I realized I was addicted to like certain types of food. Um, And then sugary, sugary foods? um, More carby type of foods. Like basically the only thing I ate was refined carbohydrates and stuff that you can put in the oven. Oven chips. Oh, the good stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Breaded, breaded everything, breaded Fish, breaded chicken, um, that's it basically. Yeah. Any refined carbohydrate, pasta. What else? Oh, I had even after a dinner, like if my mom made me a dinner, which was fine, just like a normal traditional Irish dinner, I'd be straight down to the, the Chinese after getting a three in one, like every single day. Trying to fill that craving, yeah. Absolutely, and that was like all throughout my teens, all throughout my I say early twenties as well ate about five packets of crisps a day. Jeez. Like, um, had Cocoa Pops, Weedos, you know, all them lovely Oh, cereals. I know them all. Don't worry, <laughs> I know them. Um, so, 
you were trying to satisfy that craving for all the your, your brain and your gut was telling you, I need this mm. sugary food, even when you were getting good food, and nah, mm. didn't didn't hit the spot, didn't scratch the itch. You needed the good stuff. Completely addicted. Like I didn't eat a vegetable. Yeah. Um. And. I, I don't know, I just felt, I was just, uh, felt like I could eat whatever I wanted because I wasn't fat. Yeah. But little did I know I was fueling an autoimmune disease. Yeah. And um, I enjoyed being, I suppose even as a kid, it, if I was in school now, they would have diagnosed me as ADHD. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, bouncing yeah. off the walls, hyper crazy, just screaming and... Mood but, swings. It was funny, not really a mood swing, because I never really got, thankfully, um, depressed uh, or suffered from anxiety, but I'd get so tired. Okay. Like, or my concentration was just, there was no concentration. Yeah. Um, You know, my friend used to slag me and say, you have the attention span of a fish. And I absolutely did. Um, Total, I didn't know what it was at the time, but total brain fog. And it's so sad when people experience brain, brain fog because they mistake it for depression. I spoke to a guy uh, recently who was like um, a beautiful uh, uh, artist, a musician, you know, played guitar and um, apparently was was very good at it. But he just stopped playing because he's just plagued by brain fog. Yeah. And, you know, that's really sad. Yeah. And he probably thought he was depressed, but it's actually just a blood sugar problem or yeah. high insulin. But I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit more detail. But anyway, um, then I just went like, I went on like that for a couple of years, unaware and just, it's like a fix, basically. Like as soon as you feel like kind of hungry or, and you know, that hangry feeling where you get shaky. <sighs> yeah. You're not supposed to feel that. I know. You know? Yeah. And uh, so I would just stuff myself with some type of refined carbohydrate or, or sugar um, was not really mad into chocolate. It was more crisps. But I did like a, well, what, what's that called? Uh, golden crisp. Oh, <laughs> golden crisp. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, stuff my face with uh, Ferrero Rocher and Kinder Brainers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like every day. So, um, yeah, I was just kept stuff in my face at all these things. McDonald's four or five days a week, no problem. Basically, all the money I earned just went on takeaways. And when I worked in shops, you know, as, as a teenager um, and everything, you know, all the takeaways in the local area knew exactly who I was and what I wanted. You know the money kind of special. Yeah, yeah, and they'd like even deliver it to my work and I thought I was great. And I wore all this like as a badge of honour. It's like, look, look at all this shite I can eat and I don't... I don't put on weight. And, and I'm not fat, Yeah, you know. But um, I suppose, do I regret it? I don't know, because it's such a learning. Um, but then as I got as I got older, I realized that it was actually just totally, totally like uh, harming me. And then it wasn't till. So, yeah, back to uh, my ex's mother, I suppose when that happened to her, that was like a revelation. And I found out all this information, but I didn't really do anything about it. Um, she was like, oh, if you cut out this, you cut out that, it might help your skin. I'd be like, ah, maybe, I don't know. But I thought about cutting out something like gluten for a couple of years before I actually did. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah. And then it wasn't until, I suppose, I got into my next serious relationship. And um, that was huge learning for me because this guy um, was a Buddhist. And he opened my mind to kind of like mindfulness, meditation, um. And he said to me, you know, may- maybe you should think about meditation. And I was like, sure, what would I need meditation for? Sure, I'm happy, I'm grand. But the problem was I wasn't in the present moment. I was always racing, always hyper. But I kind of like got off in that buzz. Okay, yeah. But again, I was still covered head to toe in psoriasis. So my body was screaming at me. There's something wrong here. There's something going on. But I just ignored it. And I was just like was just uh kind of it it was like a, it's like an addict you're like addicted to the to the buzz or the thrill of the shit food basically yeah um so at this point i suppose i decided to go back to college to become a nutritional therapist because i was really interested in i was like what's blood sugar is like what's what are these hormones like how do they affect you 
And I was like, geez, I can't even explain the sim- the most simple concepts of nutrition. And, you know, I had all this information from, I said, as I said, my ex's mother. And I would just go around spouting all this. Like, you know, this is actually uh, bad for you, even though they say that it's good for you. And you know this and you know that. But I... The preacher. The preacher, absolutely. And it was ridiculous. Um, And I'd know, like basis about it and people were like well Maria you know you're not a doctor or you don't have the qualifications or and I was like well I'm going to get the qualifications do you know what I mean and that and was the motivating factor yeah yeah I'm going to get the qualifications and I, as I, back to my skin and my arthritis um, I kind of had a feeling that nutrition would help and I needed to kind of like back that up so I educated myself I went back to college and do you know when I say I educated myself? There's still I still know nothing. You know what I mean? Like, the, the, it's like the more I learn about nutrition, the less I know. However, there definitely are specific protocols you can implement in your life that that can improve your symptoms. Yeah. But do you know what, Dan? I can give someone the best diet in the world. Um. But if their mindset is negative or they're not like digesting the food or the nutrients there's really no point in it so we have to like tune in to like what's actually really going on and nutritional therapy is just so holistic do you know yeah um it, ta- it considers well i i actually think this is huge relationships even who are you surrounding yourself with every day what's your way of thinking is a negative is a positive what's your sleep like what's your environment like you know, it's just, it's not just nutrition. Like yeah. nutrition is a, is a great tool to help yourself. But um, there's, you know, you have to be ready to be able to kind of take it in and absorb 100%. the nutrients. And yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely not. And it's not, um, I used to be kind of a bit dogmatic about what kind of diet would help everyone. Um, you know, it's like, the low, lower the carb, the better. And yeah, there is absolutely like um, therapeutic diets like ketogenic, even carnivore. They're very, it's very controversial, but um, I don't know. It seems to, it seems to like work for a lot of people, but there's no, I think one kind of solution for, for everyone. Do you know, there's no point in me recommending a specific diet when it doesn't actually suit someone's lifestyle yeah. or they don't like the food. Like it has to be very personalized. And that's what I do with my clients, you know. Yeah. And, do you know, they mightn't be ready for a specific type of diet. Th- I mightn't do even um, nutrition work with them. Maybe I'll, I'll give them like something to support them in the meantime, but I'll work on their. Their mindset, their mental health, their sleep their lifestyle, their routine, you know, really kind of like challenge them and question like what's working for you in your life and what's not yeah. and what kind of changes that we can we put in. And the coaching is a huge part of that. Like I do health coaching as well. Um, So I'm kind of going back and forth here, but back to um, my Buddhist <laughs> my Buddhist boyfriend, yeah, yeah, my Buddhist boyfriend, uh, not together anymore, but um, when we were, um, so he kind of like opened my mind to uh, a lot of things. And in 2015, he listened to the Joe Rogan podcast with Wim Hof on it. Okay. And this is how closed I was. This is how ridiculous I was. He said, Maria, um, like, you know, this guy is on the Wim Hof or is on the Joe Rogan podcast and he's talking about how people are cured from autoimmune diseases and, um, you know, like people are cured from mental health problems and, you know, his wife killed herself and she, she raised, he raised four kids on his own. He's like, it's just incredible. Like he's, he's, he's broken all these like mad world records. And I was like, I don't really care about that action men. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. whatever, cool. And I started to listen to the podcast and I was like, oh, this this guy's voice is annoying. I was like, I don't know. I don't really know what he's saying. Rogan or Wim Hof? Wim Hof. Wim Hof. The, 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 the Dutch the accent, Dutch, yeah. which is ridiculous. I <laughs> love the way he talks now. He's such a cool guy, you know. Yeah. But you weren't open to it. I wasn't open to it. And he said, just listen to it. So I did force myself to listen to it. And then I was just like, oh, God. I was like, there's something, there's something about this. This is a bit special. So we practiced the breathing together. 
And I felt this feeling I'd never felt before. And I was like, hmm, there's definitely some kind of like healing in this. So I kind of like practiced then on and off then for a couple of years. And I went deeper and deeper into it. And what it did, it didn't like a uh, cure. If you're looking for a magic pill, there there is none. It doesn't exist. There, there is none. All it did was give me the energy to do what I needed to do. And that was to go back to college. I suppose the timeline is a bit kind of all over the place. But that gave me the motivation to actually change my job, go back to college. Um, there's a load of stuff that kind of changed, like my mindset. And then I went to um, Neil's, Neil uh, Omeruku. He's the probably the top kind of Wim Hof instructor in Just Ireland. Breathe, breathe at Nile, is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. great. And I went to his workshop. And doing the breathing with a group of people was just transformative. And getting into the ice bath as well is something that I thought I'd never be able to do. And you're absolutely fine in it. It's, a, it's all your mindset, you know what I mean? And I was like, okay, I'm really feeling this. I was like, I need to do something with it. And then I talked to Neil about what do you do actually to become an instructor? Because um, I just felt... The message he was um, giving out and the method was just so powerful and profound. I was like, this is something I need to do. Yeah. So last year then, a lot of things changed for me. Like, this is a process, Dan. Like, I, I still, you know, I'm still a work in progress, but the kind of, like, awareness I have now and everything is just incredible. So it's not just, like, the Wim Hof or the nutrition. It's... It's a collection it's of a tools collection of thing. that you've built and customised for yeah, yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a, there's more things that that help me. Like uh, I'll talk about that after, actually. Uh, like practical philosophy and yeah. um, myself and my ex went to therapy as well. And we I actually stayed in it after we broke up to take responsibility for my part because it was easy to blame him. Yeah. But actually, <laughs> it, it's you. But anyway, I'll, I'll go back to that. Um, so I did the instructor training last year and the first weekend was in Stru in the Netherlands that's in Wim Hof's house okay. so you actually get to go to his house and meet him and all brilliant yeah yeah very cool and he's not like this special guy like I'm not in awe of anyone because we're all just we're all just humans we're all just the same and he doesn't act like he's anything special either he just says here's the method like you can practice it I've done all these mad world records but if you wanted you could do the same uh, and that's it. And you don't believe it until you can actually do it. And when you're doing the the breathing and the cold exposure with these group of incredible people, like you just feel like you can do anything, basically. And that's so the first weekend was in Strew in the Netherlands. And then the really challenging part then was the week in Poland. Is that the climb in the mountain in your that's, underwear job? That's the climb in the mountain, the underwear in the snow. Yeah. Okay. So that was in December. And then, you know, the the dampness in Ireland is not great for anyone that suffers with arthritis. Yeah. Do you know? And I was, I was, I had a walking stick before I went. At what age? This was last year. Jesus. So I was 29. Yeah. 29. Um, so, yeah, the arthritis was really bad and, you know, my parents, just out of love, were saying, listen, I don't know if you should go. Um, you might make yourself worse. And I was just like, no, I can do it. I can do it. And I went over. And I don't know, Dan, it's just something, something happened. Because for the whole week, all my autoimmune symptoms just like went away. Psoriasis started clearing up. No arthritis pain. I was able to walk up a mountain in minus whatever degrees in your underwear, um, really unfit as well. I was able to, it was uh, it was three or four hours up and down, or each way, I mean. Yeah. And yeah, it was all, I was scared uh, at the start. And the first day where we did the cold exposure, we got into this kind of like ice lake. And I also, I suppose, would have an overgrowth of candida and get UTIs. And when you're in the damp and the cold, you just, yeah. they're, they're triggered. And I was like, oh, I'll just put my hands and feet in, in the river for now because, you know, the last time I went in the lake, I got like a UTI or something. 
and you know has been very cautious very careful and the instructors notice this and they kind of they challenge you in this kind of like really gentle kind of compassionate way and they're not like giving out to you but they're like you know maybe maybe tomorrow you can try and go in you like your whole body I'm like oh I don't know I don't know and that was one of the kind of pinnacle moments where it's like it's about letting go the breath lets you like just completely let go and you get you feel like you can do anything you're just like Dan everything you need is right is right inside you know it's about going inwards and just kind of like letting go so the next day do you know I just had this attitude I was like do you know what I'm gonna get into this lake and if I get a UTI if I get this or that it's like who cares I'll deal with it yeah. okay and I just got in and I just let go and it was amazing and guess what I didn't I didn't get a UTI <laughs> do you know what I mean because <laughs> I was uh, expecting one and I was afraid of it um and then the next day and the next day I just got stronger and stronger I was able to up the cold exposure um we did like these challenges that I never thought a physical challenge that I never thought I'd be able to do and then the last day was climbing the mountain then in the in, in the, the snow. snow and in your underwear and it was an incredible experience and it just showed it's just like all mind over matter yeah. now I still had work to do after that because on the way home in the airport, I was absolutely hysterical, bawling my eyes out crying because I was in this love bubble for the whole time. Um, I was around people that just understood at, and they're, they're teachers. They're, they live at this kind of like frequency and this kind of like, I don't know, this kind of wisdom they just kind of have. It's in, They're like shaman or something. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah. And they open my mind to so much more and so much more kind of like possibilities and different types of consciousness and how you can get there. And I was like really, really curious about it. And I was like going home, I was like, God, who wants to talk about this? You know, but I just knew it was like, it was so powerful. Yeah. And I, on the way home, as I said, I was really upset because I knew I was coming home to resistance. So from there, I was like, okay, I need to make an effort to find people, find a community that actually are interested in all that kind of stuff and it's weird Dan I met you kind of soon after that like when I met you it's all judgments and perceptions I was like oh this is just like this lad you know into some, his into some, his motorbike some dude in the motorbike yeah yeah, the yeah. yeah 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 he just likes sport and cars it's like I'm sure he's <laughs> not interested a, a walking in this stereotype, yeah. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous and then when we got do you still think I'm like that no I don't I <laughs> okay. don't though you're evolving then well, thanks very much um, and then when we got talking, I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then I started talking to some more people, some more people joined like different kind of communities, uh, joined groups on Facebook. And I was like, okay, this community is actually huge in Ireland. You just have to find people that are actually interested in it. And it's about becoming kind of, um, it's about being able to bring that kind of like learning and awareness to the to the real world. And another thing that really helped me was um, I recommend everyone to do this course. Uh, it's the Practical Philosophy course um, by the School of Philosophy in Dublin. Mm. I think no, they have. I think they have it over the co over the country. But um, the one I went to anyway is in Baldbridge. But it's ten week course at a time, and and each every ten weeks there's a different theme. So first there's an introductory. Uh, class and that's 10 weeks and it's only 10 euro so you basically nothing to lose and I think it runs from Monday to Thursday so you can pick what evening that you want to go and you just start off just like questioning things it's like what is a what is a wise man you know um can everyone be wise can everyone uh you know change what's freedom what's love you know? Yeah, the big, the big ones. The, the big, big the big ones. It's basically everything that I've ever wanted to talk about. People were talking about. Yeah. So, I was. Um, it's kind of like a support group because they give very practical solutions or practical kind of like actions to do during the week. So things like, um, let me think of an example. 
So, you know, if like you meet someone and you have like a preconceived idea and you nearly are like, oh, for God's sake, before you see them. Yeah, like you like, with me. <laughs> 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 yeah, or no, it's actually this say this action was it was about someone you knew. Okay. So you're like, oh, they're going to behave in this kind of yeah, way. Yeah, they're yeah, going to yeah. say this. Yeah. They're going to piss me off. You already have this the end game played out in your head before you've even had the interaction. Exactly. Yeah. So you act like you've never met them before and like, you know, act like you're meeting them for the first time, okay. Fre- a fresh kind of like slate, yeah. you know what I mean? And doing that is actually like super, super powerful yeah. because they might not say the thing that you're expecting them to say or, you know, like don't attach to all these judgments and perceptions you have about them. But I'm going to talk about judgment now in a minute, but um, just really practical things like that or... um. They, you start off with like a, say a two minute kind of awareness meditation that you do every morning and evening. Yeah. I already had like a meditation practice at that time. But um, yeah, they give you like tools to do every single day that you can bring into your life. That That's not hard. And you mightn't say, oh, oh sure, I, I have no time for that. It's like, um, OK, well, do you have time to be miserable? What are the priorities? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and this kind of thing of being busy 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 just going through life really robotically not really tuning into your intention of or why you're doing something it's like well you know bills need to be paid and i respect that and i get that and i have to pay my own bills and um that's fine but you can do it in like much more kind of like being much more aware get like a lot more joy out of things it's it's possible because um i just think i suppose our values in this country um the priority from, I feel, government is kind of uh, money and power. It's like jobs, 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 jobs. It's like, I well, you know, jobs are great, but like w- people are kind of like wage slaves and they're too tired and overworked to even enjoy their time off. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah. So there's a ballot, like, um, I did some projects with uh, Development Perspectives. They're like a, a development education organization in Drada and they focus on poverty, inequality and climate change. Now I'm not like a social justice warrior or like going around telling people what they should do but we kind of like visit countries like Tanzania and uh, Vietnam and we have so much to learn from them because they prioritise kind of like happiness, community um, and just kind of like connection. Yeah. Um, Obviously, of course, they have their own problems like like everywhere else, but the kind of community spirit they have and um, what they prioritise is, is a lot different. Do you know what I mean? And they work really, really hard. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But their 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 inte- their goals are, are different. Do you know what I mean? 100%, yeah, yeah. People are working. Unfortunately, um, you know, to even get a mortgage these days or to pay mortgage, it's it's huge. Like what you have to give in exchange for that is just unbelievable. Yeah, it's not an equal trade-off. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm laughing here as I'm sitting listening to you because this is this is the reason, whether you knew it or not, why I wanted you to, on the podcast. Because we have these conversations all mm. the time and they're, they're, they're fantastic conversations. Yeah. I enjoy having them. I'm not saying everyone mm. should have these conversations. I enjoy having them. But in the space of the last 25 minutes, say there, you've touched on almost every single topic that I've done a podcast on so far or that... Uh, come up in conversations with everybody that I speak that I have respect for and that mm. I like talking to because the first thing I'll say is a lot of people nowadays are able to do podcasts and to do YouTube and to do Instagram and all that kind of stuff and give advice but a huge percentage of those I'm not saying everybody a huge percentage of those they're not coming from a place of personal experience mm. or, or, or anything like that so they don't really have that kind of authority and people recognise that but you've just shared your story with us mm. and you've gone through I'd say in your life, you've gone through what hundreds and thousands of people have gone through individual parts of what you've gone through from mm. your autoimmune mm. to your your uh, adoption to addiction to, to, to bad foods mm. to um, mindset issues, mm. all sorts of stuff. And you're in a place now where you've covered nutrition, you've covered philosophy, you've covered breeding, you've covered meditation, you've and you've built this toolbox of techniques and tools that work for you. And I was going to say it, and then you said it yourself, that it's not a case of finding the tool that works mm. for everybody. Because yeah. I used to be like that as well. I used to be really, really frustrated. I couldn't find the diet that works or the strength yeah. conditioning program that works. Yeah. 
And it took me a long time to realize that doesn't actually exist. Mm -hmm. What does exist is finding all the small little pieces of the puzzle that work for you Absolutely. that mightn't work for anybody else yeah. and when I started my podcast my whole my whole drive behind it was well, one selfishly I want to find the pieces that work for me I want to mm -hmm. speak to people like you and mm -hmm. all the people I've had in the podcast and I want to pull those bits of information that yeah. work for me and learn from people that can help me but it was also about having having people like yourself come on and explain to the listener that Th this genuinely is it is this whole the journey not the destination mm -hmm. thing there is no destination yeah but the journey is about finding the techniques and taking responsibility to look after yourself and find all these different things that can help you yeah and it could be totally off the wall mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if it's totally off the wall and just because i mean y y you've even touched on the whole the, the the doctor issue again no problem with doctors mm -hmm. absolutely no problem with doctors they're fantastic people but that approach of there's nothing we can do it's no, 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 don't worry about diet or anything like that. Here's a medication, here's yeah. a steroid cream for your skin, but there's nothing else we can do mm. because there's no data, there's no data, there's no yeah, data. Yeah. That is that I, when I was uh, practicing as a physio, the one thing I hated more than anything else was when a client came into me and said, The surgeon said, I would never mm. walk again, limiting or play belief. Again. That's all it is. Immediately, I'd say to that person, If you believe that, then you're done. There's no point Absolutely. doing anything. Yep. Um, and it's the same with the medication, there is no data to support anything else, which means to to me and you that nothing else works yeah it's so limiting it is um and, but the journey you took was you know what don't believe that i'm gonna s i know there's not not a lot of data out there well there is a lot of that if you go looking for it but mm. i am going to go through my own experience yeah. and learn that stuff for yeah. myself and now you're sitting here in front of me but all and you say it yourself you say it every time we meet i'm not there yet dan yeah I'm, and, and you may never be there if there is a there i don't yeah. even know if there is a there but it's a work in progress it's a work in progress and it's that work in progress that i'm fascinated yeah. by and i hope i hope people who are listening who are struggling with things realize that because i struggle with this all the time thinking that there's five thousand things i could do from all the people i talked to the dietary changes and strength conditioning meditation all that, and sometimes it's, you get overwhelmed because there's so much to do mm -hmm. you're like i can't do any of it but then you try one small thing mm -hmm. um, and I won't go into the cup of tea and the pull up story again because I say it all the time. But one small thing starts that process. Absolutely. And then an another small thing and then another small thing. Um, and the, what's important to remember is that something you try might not work for you. And what happens sometimes people say, oh, well, you know, that doesn't work for me. There's no help for me. Oh, well, yeah. it's like, no, keep going until you find something. It might not be conventional. It might not. It might be a bit controversial. Um, it might not have the data to back it up, but just keep trying until you find something that suits you because there are hundreds of therapies out there. Yeah. And there, there is something that, that will work. Yeah. And you yeah. just keep having to try. And I went to a retreat before and I feel that's where it just kind of like all clicked into place for me. And I had like this kind of like realisation. And I, I will say, I know it sounds wishy-washy, but at that point, I did reach enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> You're woke. It's, yeah, Hashtag woke. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even like to use that word. But when I say enlightenment, I realized that I was the person standing in my own way. I was so... I actually thought, I was like, I'm actually really sound. And uh, I'm not <laughs> controlling or anything. Like, you know, I'm, I'm cool. I'm easygoing. Actually... I, w I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's weird. What happened was I, I, um, I saw this piece of bread and... It's always fucking bread. Yeah, I saw this piece of bread and what was happening at the retreat kind of made... I had this overwhelming feeling of gratitude and unconditional love and I looked at the bread and I was like, oh, my God. I was like, why am I so afraid of bread? <laughs> now, I'm not saying I'm going to be like chowing down bread from now on yeah. because, you know. But I did, I wasn't afraid. And I actually ate. I ate bread and I hadn't eaten bread in years at this point. And not only did my symptoms like get worse, they actually improved because... I let go of the fear. I had this like thing. It's like it wasn't the bread that was like I cut out bread and like as did a certain type of diet for a long time. And, you know, I was still, you know, still had the symptoms, still had the psoriasis, the arthritis and 
a very mild form of ulcer colitis as well. I was like, well, you know, I'm doing the diet, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but you know, these symptoms keep coming and going. I'm not really like getting to the bottom of it. So it's not the bread that's keeping me sick. I was like, what is it? And then it's it's me. It's holding on to whatever it is, Dan. Yeah. You know, limiting beliefs, conditioning. So at that point, I was able to literally let go of every single thing that does not serve me. Any conditioning or any belief that doesn't serve me is is now gone. And for me, that's that's enlightenment. Yeah. And when you say conditioning or belief, what give us an example? What are you, what are you talking about there? Um. Okay, I'll give you an example. A person at the retreat. I knew them. It was just a it was just a coincidence that they were there as well, and I would have said before that they piss me off. I hate being around them. They make me feel uncomfortable. They're this, they're that. When I reached that point of, I'm going to call it enlightenment. I wish there was another word. because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, is, it is a cliched word, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. I was able to actually have unconditional love for that person. Unconditional love and gratitude for everyone and everything around me. I saw everything. It's like I just saw everything like for the first time. And I was like, God, this is all bullshit. I was like, I had attached all these limiting beliefs. They're this, they're that. And I actually realized people say, oh, he pissed me off. She pissed me off. They did this to me. They did that. And people have said to me for years, well, it's up to you how you react to it. Or like, it's up to you if you get affected by it or not. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, that's all well and good. But like, you know, I still feel like this. And, you know, it's I'm not blaming people for feeling this because I felt it for years. But it's a, it's actually you. So what I was able to do that person was still doing all the things that would annoy me before, but all I did, Dan, was observe them. Yeah. Just be the observer. I was like, oh, interesting. They're doing that thing. And I wasn't, didn't feel good or bad about it. I just observed. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to engage personally with that. And get you don't your emotions have to involved. attach. Yeah. It's about being attached to things. Yeah. Um. So now I feel like I'm at a point, if you said, if you just like, threw a load of abuse at me right now and said I'm this and that and whatever I actually would not be affected by it I'd be like okay there's Dan just doing his thing he's saying these things must be something about him yeah. interesting that's it I just don't get involved emotionally involved in things anymore and it's the most freeing thing that you can ever do but that takes that took me years of practice and thinking about it and therapy and all all the rest yeah. um because i just want to go did you want to say something no there? go yeah go ahead i just wanted to say something about about um therapy i suppose that made me so as i said myself and my ex went to counseling a, um a, a point in our relationship because you know i did have like a lot of love for the person and i kind of didn't want to just like let it go and i had like a lot of resentment and I suppose dis disdain but that actually now I realize that that was just that's that was all me I could say oh he was doing this he was doing that he couldn't do this he couldn't do that blah 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 but it was my judgment that ruined things you know obviously Dan abuse is a different thing and if you're in an abusive relationship like you need to leave or change that situation but I didn't have the the, I suppose, the compassion, the lack of judgment, the awareness that I have now. And I suppose it's too late now, but if I, I wish I had the wisdom yeah. now, uh, then, back then. Yeah, now, but, that, but that's fine, you know, I, I don't regret it because it's a, it it's a, learn, a learning process. And um, it's, it's kind of cool because my situation now, uh, I would still say that, uh, you know, I'm single but I'm, I'm open to like, love in whatever whatever form it comes but you are like your own life partner so you don't actually need anyone I've realized that as well I'm perfectly happy on my own yeah. but like I you know obviously I welcome love but I have to say um my situation now I have been able to practice a non-judgmental compassionate relationship with someone for the last couple of years and it's been the most freeing liberating beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my life yeah so I can I can 
bring that into real life, thankfully. But Brilliant. back to the therapy, um, you know, when we broke up, I just stayed there because it was a huge, huge loss, loss for me. And I suppose the grief, even though it was me that wanted to kind of like change things. And I actually realized, God, I was blaming him for the for the whole time. But guess what my part in it was? Judgment and expectations. Yeah. You know, if you have expectations on someone, that's on you. It's nothing to do with them. Yeah. And if they don't meet your expectations, that's your that's your problem. Deal with it. You know? Yeah. Obviously like communication is key and you don't want things to like blow up. But, you know, I remember being in relationships years ago and uh, you know, you'd get to a point where you'd just kind of like completely not have control over your emotions. You'd be screaming and crying and you'd bollocks yourself so much. I don't know if this has ever happened to people, but, you know, talking to friends or whatever, you're already set to go on a night out or something. You have a massive blow up and then you like literally you just you can't. You're just so drained. Yeah. Like, oh, here, it's fine. I'm never going to do that again. There's there's no points, you know, and if you feel like you're so, you're getting to that point in a relationship, you need to, I don't know, do something drastic to change it like go go to therapy do whatever you need to do do your own kind of like healing your own your own um what just basically wh- whatever you need to do and don't expect that person to fix you or to make you happy because it has to come within yourself you know and you're just going to it's not going to work if <laughs> it's not going to work if you're expecting the other person to make you happy basically yeah and to to meet your expectations obviously you know there's a certain amount of kind of expectation i suppose you would have in a relationship like you know mutual respect communication all that kind of stuff but you know it, it can be worked on hi guys just going to interrupt you for a second to remind you that today's guest is maria Connolly, a qualified nutritional therapist and wim Hof breeding instructor if you want to learn more about anything that myself and Maria talk about in today's episode, you can get in touch with us at podcast at primal.ie, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Primal Pro, and everything we talk about on today's show will be available in the show notes over at www.primal.ie forward slash Maria Connolly. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to go big picture on this for a second because sometimes listening to, to someone like yourself say these things, you get a lot of people who immediately switch off. There, there's a lot of resistance to this mm. kind of, especially like you mentioned your retreat there, you mentioned enlightenment, you mentioned yeah. taking responsibility for yourself. Yeah. But I'm going to just for a second li- look back at some of the people, the other people that we've had on this podcast mm. from completely different backgrounds and experiences to yeah. you and how similar the stuff they're saying is yeah. to what you're saying right now. Just to put some context on this. So we had um, Robbie. Robbie was on yeah. uh, from the ISI, Robbie Bennett, and his big message was talking. He was talking about nutrition, um, but his big message was, you, "You're not what you eat; you are mm. what you assimilate." Yes, and exactly. his whole thing was, "You need to be in a position where your body is prepared to accept the nutrients. Accept, you need yep. to be ready. You need to be open to accepting." And he was talking from a scientific mm-hmm. point of view. Your body needs to be ready, or else yep. these nutrients mean mm-hmm. nothing. You put whatever food you want in, yeah. but unless your body is prepped for it, mm-hmm. you're not you're not going to be able to, yeah. to absorb or, or, or assimilate that. And um, Daniel Davy was on expert nutritionist. Yep. And Daniel said the exact same thing mm-hmm. about mindful eating. Yep. It's not about the food. It's about the whole experience. Yep. How are you eating? Where are you eating? Who are you eating with? Yep. You need to be in a good environment for 100%. your body to be able to, to grow or yep. to uh, take advantage of what you're putting into your body. Yep. On Lacey, one of the big things he says is you, you need to look at the landscape. You need to look at the environment you're setting up for yourself before you go down the road of because everybody wants to talk to someone like going about supplements and performance mm-hmm. and high performance and training and yeah. the, the top end the very top end but he always says the same thing we need to look at the landscape yeah well, wh- we need to build this world for you yep. where you can succeed uh colin colin was on talking about somatics and he mm. said again the exact same thing it's not about optimization it's about normalization yeah you need to normalize you need to yep. go prepare it right back to you absolutely set your stage and then deal with the world Mm -hmm. then deal with all the external input and you've just said the exact same thing when people listen to you or sometimes me or sometimes any of these people I've just mentioned there they immediately roll the eye enlightenment oh she was on a retreat 
don't want to use that word, but I don't know what other word to use. Because those words yeah. are really cliche because <laughs> yeah. there's a resistance to it. Yeah. Because, and I, I really sympathize with myself and every human being on the planet. Yeah. It's hard to be a human being. Yeah. Very hard because even though you're on a journey now where you've, you've all these fantastic techniques and, and, and um, practices in place to, to manage your own emotions and how you engage with the mm -hmm. world, I'm sure there's still days where you get upset by things mm -hmm. that people do or say. Yeah. Or not immune to it. Not immune to it. Yeah. There's ups and there's downs. That's absolutely normal. Yeah. But to have massive resistance to that just because you hear words like enlightenment or retreat yeah. or woke, like the unconditional love thing, when you said that, I, I, I've been very open. I, I, I had an experience myself. Now, mine was, was in a clinic with, yeah. with the ketamine treatments yeah. and it was, it was an experimental thing for mm -hmm. me. But I experienced the exact same thing. Yeah. That, that kind of, what the fuck are we all arguing about yep. and th these, these people do things that annoy me and upset me all why you're upsetting yourself i'm upsetting basically. myself yeah. um even even down to relationships and stuff with that my engagements with other people with my own partner with, with my family everything when i actually pair it back and in the small period of time where i managed to to get into this headspace when i pair it back i realize i'm getting upset about a b c or d because of me yep. they're doing things that might be not contributing to that, that might be triggering my own feelings, but they're my own feelings. And if I deal with those feelings, the chances are their behaviours, whether they're good or bad, aren't really going to make a difference to how I feel about myself. Exactly. And if you're looking outward, if you're looking at other people's behaviours too much instead of your own, you're looking outward too much and you're not looking inward because that's where the answers are. You're not going to get them outside judging other people and saying they're doing this and doing uh, that. Exactly. Yeah. And another cliched phrase, yeah. looking inward, that's so true. I, I, I say this, right, this, this is how I, I frame it in my mind This because it makes it easy for me to understand and maybe it'll help it easy for other people to understand if they've been in this situation. Before I had a child, I've, I've my daughter is two and a half now, before mm. I had Zoe, people would say things to me like, when you have a child, your world will change. Yeah. You will no longer be the center of your own universe. Something else will. Mm -hmm. You will lo learn to love differently. Your priorities will shift. Mm -hmm. You won't be interested in the things you were before. You'll be more interested. All these things. And I would listen to people and as a reasonable, p polite human, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. It didn't make any impact exactly. on my brain or how I felt. It meant nothing to me. It was like they were speaking Chinese. Yeah. It meant nothing to me. The second that child was put in my hand, and this is a cliche, but it's absolutely true. They put that child in my hand and my world shifted. And yeah. I can't explain it That's in any other way. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you've had a life-changing experience, having a child for me was one of them. Yeah. And I was looking down at this child and I was like, it was like a light bulb. All those things people had ever said to me you immediately guess. I was yeah. like now I own, now yeah. I get it I under yeah. ah, I understand it was they were speaking English so I understood yeah. the language but I didn't understand the motivation exactly. behind it something like what you're saying there about looking inwards yeah. and unconditional love and my ego was dissolved and yeah. it wasn't him it was me it's very very hard for someone to understand or acknowledge that unless they've had a similar experience so yeah, I can exactly. relate to this exactly. massively because I've had this I've and had I get that and I'm the same I I heard people talking like me and I'm like bullshit bullshit like, bullshit yeah. to talk and shite yeah. and for a long time you know I was saying these things I wanted to believe them but until I felt them and I now I'm the person I'm living the type of life I want to live I am the person that I want to be That's now. That's incredible. And for so long I was trying trying to do this, trying to do that, but just be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now now I can do that. And the key, I think, sorry to cut you off there, yep. I think the key, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, with what yeah. you did was, you just kept hammering at this hammering. thing. Until it happened. <laughs> I, for me, I had, I, someone handed me a baby. <laughs> it's yeah, a big yeah, guy, this yeah, baby's yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. You kept hammering at this because yeah. a part of you knew yeah. there was something to it. And you kept yeah. going and going and going and going. So I think that's what I'm trying to say to, to people is, even if you haven't had the baby in the hands moment or the life-changing revelation, or as I call it, the heart attack where you've had a massive scare mm -hmm. in your life, it is possible to achieve this yeah. by going at it. And it doesn't have to be really difficult or hard. It can be an enjoyable process. Yeah. But you have to make it a process. There has to be an acknowledgement. You're going to sit down and you're going to talk to yourself, right, Dan, or John, or Mary, or whatever. You are now going to try yep. and make your life better. Yeah. And you're going to do it yourself. And yeah. you're going to take control. And you're not going to expect your mommy or your daddy or your doctor yep. or your brother or your sister or your partner or whatever <laughs> to do it for you. Yeah. You're going to do it yourself. I think even that yeah. is enough for someone to go, Oh, I can do this myself. Yeah, exactly. And whether they're dealing with depression or anxiety or or sick uh, relatives or anything that's a really difficult thing to deal with in your life, there's still space to do that. And probably what will happen is when you start that process, you'll be m in a much better place to manage all of those other Definitely. difficult issues in your life. Yeah. That's what I think. That's what I believe anyway. I think so. And I just want to go back to the point you're making about, you know, Robbie was saying, you know, 
you are what you kind of like assimilate and all that kind of stuff. But I want people to be like really, really mindful of the fact that our thoughts and behaviours and our actions are just an interplay of what our hormones and our neurotransmitters are doing at any point in time. So you don't have to attach yourself to that. So I think it's really important to point out it's um, this happens for men as well, of course, but for women, it's a little bit different because of our cycle. And basically you could feel like your hormones are doing something different every day, not even every day. <laughs> every five <laughs> fucking minutes. <laughs> yeah. And you kind of like really need to tune into that. Um, and, you know, the kind of culture is now if girls have like problems with their periods, or whatever, it's like, oh, just take a Panadol or whatever. It's fine. You know, just ignore it or whatever. But I would urge people to really tune into like what's going on. Maybe you're maybe you just need um you're lacking in the nutrient or something. Maybe yeah. a bit of magnesium might help. Maybe a bit of kind of restored restorative practice might help. There's a few people now online that I think are excellent at kind of helping with that kind of thing and, and bringing awareness to it. So there's a girl called uh, Lisa DeLong. She's a, um, a menstrual coach. That's what she called it. And when I even heard of that, I was like, ew, I was like a menstrual coach. <laughs> but like, <laughs> she is so tuned in to her cycle and to women's kind of like health and hormones. She's absolutely excellent. And every single day, like you should follow her on Instagram. I think Lisa DeLong. Um, I put it in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she talks about... And again, it sounds really wishy-washy, like inner summer, inner autumn, inner winter. And you're like, what is this shit? But actually, she has this kind of like awareness um, about how you feel. So I actually don't know. You'll have to like, I suppose, talk to her about it. What it really means to be in your inner summer or winter. It means that, you know, some days you're going to have to kind of say no to things and just kind of rest and then some days you'll be able to you know do more kind of like active things be more kind of like giving and then then other days you yeah. just need to be a bit not like selfish but just kind of like go inwards again and kind yeah, of like reflect yeah, yeah. and there's um there's another person um i'm talking about irish women at the moment but i know there's like people like carrie jones the american uh doctor she's excellent at hormone kind of health as well but um, actually, someone local, uh, AOK Nutrition, Ashley O'Kelly, she's brilliant. She's she is just like her her specialty is uh, women's kind of hormones, excellent. Like, and um, she recommends like you know different herbs and kind of like yeah. uh, supplements to really help with that. Um, so get on to her as well. But Jenny Keen, I don't know if you heard of her. I have heard of Jenny. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, like she is so in tune with everything and when you listen to her like again sounds really wishy-washy hippy-dippy and you're like what is she talking about but like she's winning you know yeah she absolutely. is winning yeah I she feels that she allows herself that pleasure and she just like uh, tunes into her desire and she goes for it and she teaches women how to do the same and she has a program i think called period power and also another program called uh, 30 Days to Orgasm and orgasm kind of workshops. And, yeah. you know, a lot of women are just kind of like very tense and including myself, you know, I have problems with it myself um, that I'm trying to be more open with. Um, just, you know, kind of like shame around their sexuality and yeah. orgasm and all that kind of stuff because we weren't really taught that. We were kind of conditioned in a very kind of like, like sex is this very kind of like mechanical thing, but it can be very like kind of like spiritual. You know, I'd urge people to look into like kind of tantra. It doesn't even have to be like sex, just tantra itself. You yeah. know, really tune into like your body and your connection and the power within yourself. And even something that I've learned uh, recently is like your chakras. And if someone talked about a chakra before, I was like, oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah. But like <laughs> when you, that's another thing. When you feel it, then you believe it. 100%, okay. Yeah. So just if I could just get this one message across is to open your mind. Yeah. Like, what what do you have to lose? Like, there's no point getting into a power struggle about something and say, oh, well, there's no evidence for that. Like, okay, just just try it and then open your mind and see see what happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? So them, them women are, br are brilliant. Like, in, in Ireland that I know of anyway, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's more, but these are the women that I've had experience with and they're, they're amazing. Very in tune with... Yeah hormones and everything else it's such i'd like to stay on the topic yeah. for a while actually because i think it's really really important it's something we don't really talk about a lot 
um, is is women's health. Yeah. And I'm trust me, I am far from an expert on women or women's health. Uh, but I've listened to a few very very interesting people very very recently talk about women's health and the mm-hmm. importance. And for me, over the last probably five or six years since I've been really delving deep into this world of functional health and medicine and yeah. self love and care and all that kind yeah. of stuff. One thing that's been really obvious to me, but that is really to build to talk about because it's all about empowerment of women and women, the mm. equal pay and women as CEOs and women as doctors, which I think is great if the woman wants to go down yeah, that road. Of course. But there's a massive societal pressure for women to have to do that, mm-hmm. to stand up for the vote and to stand up for other women. And it puts a huge amount of pressure on women. And where I see the problem with that is... Women and men, and this is this is a, a con- I don't know why this is a controversial topic. Women and men are different. Women yeah. and men are designed differently, different mm-hmm. hormones, different yes. physiology. I that's my belief, and, oh, and there's going to be people screaming down the earphones now. Fine, okay, people have different beliefs, but in my opinion, women and men are different, yep. and they tolerate inputs and outputs differently, and tolerate stresses differently. Yeah. The world we have designed for ourselves now is high pressure and mm-hmm. high competition, and yeah. men are designed for that. Now, it's not to say that men are doing well at the moment, because mm-hmm. men are in brutal nick at the moment mm-hmm. with their own mental health yep. and hormone profile and stuff like that, but in general, men are designed for that aggressive, competitive environment, and we've built a capitalist, aggressive environment mm-hmm. with our world, which I don't have a major problem with. Yeah. But yes. we need to understand how to interact with that world. When you put yeah. women in that environment, like why? Why do we think that there is a huge issue with fertility at the moment, mm-hmm. with, with with female sexual health yeah. and fertility? Yeah. Massive issue. Yeah. I would say every single person listening to this podcast knows somebody who's struggling with fertility, who's struggling to have a child or struggling with some form of, of female health issue. Yeah. And it didn't used to be like that. Yeah. Like, let's compare it to 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It wasn't like that. The mm-hmm. same with male testosterone issues now and, and 30 or 40 years ago. It has changed in the space of a generation. Yeah. Why? Because of the chronic stress, the high com- competitive lifestyles that we live now. Yeah. So when I listen to, to, to people, um, I know she won't mind me saying it. Ro- Robin uh, is a client of mine and a friend of mine who runs the Beauty of True podcast. She yeah. runs her own podcast. And she had Adam Dowling on. Adam Dowling is a local. Um, he is a body transformation or a body, I don't get this wrong, body recomposition coach. So he helps people prepare for um, aesthetic competitions and, and photo shoots and yeah. stuff like that. But he now has a focus on female health, which for me listening to, uh, and I won't call him a personal trainer because he's not, but someone in the fitness industry yeah. talking about female health was very interesting and then Robin said something to me which I probably have heard thousands of times that when she started to train with this guy he was asking her questions about her cycle and menstrual health and stuff like that yeah. she's like oh Jesus don't be <laughs> and she said this on her own podcast yeah, yeah. don't be asking me about that kind yeah. of chat and it was, it was with Robert don't, don't acknowledge that yeah. but then he was able to explain to her how important it is to understand that on different days and different times of the week you're going to feel differently Absolutely. your body's going to u- need more energy or less energy yeah. you're going to need to treat yourself differently because you are dealing with an inevitable cycle that happens every single month yeah. to every single woman on the planet unless yeah. there's medical issues there obviously um, and different and phases of it different as well different phases of yeah. it yeah and y- it, there's no point trying to ignore that yeah. like a man for the most part again unless there are serious issues there can be the same all mm-hmm. month round from a hormone point of view yeah. now it, give or take bad sleep good sleep bad food good yeah, sleep high stress absolutely. low stress obviously there's yeah. variables um, but there's not the huge swing that you have with a female yeah. but females are being told that that's not to be acknowledged because you have mm. to perform in and your job feel shame job. over it She's a moody bitch you know why, why, you, you, why are you so moody yeah. you have to fee- feel you, you have to perform at your job all yep. all, all month long yeah. you don't get allowances because you're yeah. a female anymore you want to sa- earn the same money you want the same vote you have to be outrageous stuff I think it's yeah. outrageous but it's it's conditioned yeah. it's conditioned into girls at a young age now yeah. you have to be super successful and driven and motivated all the time mm-hmm. And it's just not a fact. Yeah. So the same as everything else we've spoken about, if you ignore what's going on on the inside as a man or a woman, and a woman particularly with your cycle, you're going to suffer because you're fighting nature. And y- have you ever jumped into the middle of the sea and tried to win against the sea? Mm-hmm. Nature always wins. You're, you're not going to beat nature. All you're going to do is make yourself sick and make yourself unhappy. Yeah. So I think for females, the, the point I'm trying to get across in that mad, long, disjointed rant there was it's really important to acknowledge and accept yes. and be okay with the yeah. fact that you're going to have swings. Because yeah. my thing with me, I'm not a female, but I know on days I'm going to feel terrible. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, what am I going to do on those days mm-hmm. to try and mitigate that? Exactly. Uh, I, I know it's coming. No matter how good I am or how good shape I'm in or how good the food I'm eating is, and not, not that any of that's going, going particularly well, but it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. On some days I'm going to feel bad. Exactly. Something's going to happen. Exactly. How do I deal with that? 
It's the same for a woman. Yeah. I know that there are some days where I'm not going to feel good and it's my hormones. It's yeah. what's happening on the inside. Yes. How do I deal with it? I think it's really important. I'm glad that you said that the guy is uh, bringing, he's asking women about their menstrual cycle and you're talking about it. It's very important for Huge men important. to be educated about it because, you know, a lot of men are in relationships with women. With women. And I know for myself, um, I thankfully I haven't really suffered too badly from uh, a hormone imbalance. Inflammation was my problem, but some days you feel a lot more irritable than than others or you feel like more snappy or even to maybe just like looking at someone is annoying <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean and it's important I to kind of yeah yeah <laughs> uh you know having that communication it's like okay i'm feeling this on this day actually my my thing is i wake up and i feel like i'm hung over it's like this kind of drain. It's yeah. like everything and it's like difficult. And if I get emotionally caught up in that, I can have like a really, really bad day and it could be a disaster. But if I bring awareness to that and communicate with the people I'm around, it's like, listen, I'm feeling like this today. I can't actually give much. I can't really talk much. Um, Definitely can't have sex, you know. Yeah. Um, I can't do whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? Can Can you just be patient with me? Is it okay? Um just it's not it's not about you yeah. and i suppose when somebody behaves in a certain way towards you it's it's not about taking a personal because it's not it's not about you and i i had had a very lack of this awareness in past relationships and i would have got emotionally attached to it so if i felt like agitated or tired or whatever as i said even looking at the person would just piss me off <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what kind of what kind of way is yeah. that's going to that's going to be disaster you're going to like trigger fights and all that kind of stuff and guys when you're eating like a shit diet and you're not giving your body the nutrients for all the pathways it needs to do for all like your neurotransmitters for all your hormones if you're deficient in any of them you're going to feel shit you're going to feel tired you're going to feel irritable and brain fog what type of relationship can you have yourself with yourself and other people if that's how you if that's your baseline it's going to be terrible yeah you know and i don't want a mediocre life john or john 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 excuse Jesus. me excuse me this podcast that's, my, is over. that's my special friend um <laughs> dan <laughs> i'm not your special friend <laughs> dan um john jesus uh, what's going on there so what am I saying? I'm kind of, that's kind of true me. Oh, yeah. So you you have to kind of like realize you aren't your hormones or your like neurotransmitters or whatever. It, your body can trick you into thinking that you're something that you're not. And when you do something like the Wim Hof breathing or any type of like breathing uh, practice or meditation or even exercise or you're doing something that you really connect with, whether it be arts or you know, some kind of creative activity, that's when you actually get to tune into your true self and you're like, Oh shit, what was I even mad about that for? What was I even why was I arguing with someone over that? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Do you know? And those and you moments, just let it go. Yeah. They're really liberating. Yeah, they are. I mean, I've had a few of those moments. Yeah, not yeah. not too many. I still struggle with it. But those moments when you do have that moment of huh? that wasn't about me. Yeah, yeah. You're like, geez, I'm free. Yeah. It's, it's like, and again, this sounds so cliched. And as I'm listening to myself, I'm like, people are gonna think I'm fucking crazy here. <laughs> but it's so liberating it's really freeing if you have a moment where you're like you know what that wasn't about me yeah. whatever the interaction was yeah. i'm cool with me at the moment i think yeah. Yeah, whatever whatever i said or did there came from a place inside me that i'm happy with that i'm yeah. comfortable with that and that was a reaction from somebody else who's yeah. really struggling and when you realize that okay think about how you think every single day your head is up your head is down your head is in your head mm. is out you have a million Every other person's like that mm -hmm. so when you can look at someone else and say they're probably really struggling with stuff as well yeah yeah that's liberating. Have that compassion and the empathy if you can. You exactly. know, it's hard, but you can. Very hard. Yeah, yeah. Very hard. Ha especially, when, especially if it's a direct interaction with you. And I'm saying to you, Maria, I have a problem with you right now because of ABC. Very hard for you to say, I'm going to have compassion and love and hug this person. Yeah. And Very not be affected by it. Not be affected yeah. by it. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest with you, most people, and for years, my reaction was to engage with that with aggression. Not physical aggression, but I'm going to defend my corner here. But no. guess what that is, Dan? It's our ego. It, 100%. Dissolve the ego. It does not serve us because like... Who do they think they are talking to me like this? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, like... How dare they? How how dare they? Yeah, that and was me you know I mean? for a long time. But imagine if you're just like to let that go. Yeah. Just let it go. Unbelievable. And not even, I suppose, 
that that just kind of reminds me of a point like of let of letting go like letting go was basically the thing that was able to kind of like really really start me on my healing journey but during the philosophy classes uh, there was an example now I'm not people have trauma in their lives and that's not to be dismissed and you know we need help and support for that and that's all good however there was a woman um that was in the class now I wasn't in her class but the teacher described the situation where she was just could not get over the death of her husband like it's huge huge loss mm. huge grief and it happened like a number of years years ago and she, the woman was just miserable she just was hanging holding on to this and the teacher asked her do, do you want to let it go and then th- apparently there was just this silence in the room you could hear like a pin drop and it was just like no I don't want to let it go. Yeah. So it's very controversial to say, but even if you've been through like severe trauma or loss, if you're going to hold on to that, it's actually a choice. Yeah. And it's very liberating to f- to kind of know that it there is a choice and to feel like it is a choice and you can let it go. Because if you, if you feel like you let it go, it's like, well, who am I? What will happen? Will I die? It's like so scary, but like letting go is, is the key. And yeah. there's so many things that help with that. Yeah. And I, that, I'm yeah. delighted you said that last yeah. sentence there. Yeah. There are so many things that help with that because yeah. I was a devil for ages for saying to people, um, don't don't let it, don't let this thing work you up so much. And I'm, at the same time, I was getting fucking worked up by loads of stuff. But yeah. what what touched my brain when I eventually realised because people used to say to me, let it go and and don't don't uh, don't let that thing work you up so much. You have to do things. You have to do. Something now it could be meditation, it could be therapy, it could yeah. be self examination, but being passive yeah. is not letting it go. Yeah, like it's a common phrase when someone says, Never just tell someone to relax, yeah, because you can't just relax. Yeah, and I'm fully aware you can't just yeah. go relax, yeah. all right, I'm relaxed, but you can do certain, like, take this for example, box breathing. You know, box yeah, breathing yeah, is yeah, so yeah. If people do not know what box breathing is, breathe in for four seconds, hold for four seconds, breathe yeah. out for four seconds, and this is quite a common technique used to try and help you relax to yeah. try and help you calm down to try and slow the system down there is one thing out of millions that you could do when you get massively stressed or irate or pissed off or you're stuck in trap whatever that's that's a physical thing that you can do an intervention that could help you relax use your breath it is use like it. the tool there that's free and it changes your your changes your physiology yeah. you go from your sympathetic nervous system that's like the fight and flight the stressful kind of state and you're bringing yourself right into that calm rest and digest parasympathetic state just by your breath i mean how incredible is that you're changing your all your physiology you're changing your co2 and your carbon dioxide levels like your hormone levels everything and isn't this wim hof method he he preaches not preaches but he he explains that you can change your body with input yep column said this the last day when he was on it's a feedback loop yeah and you can intervene in that feedback loop so you don't have to be a slave to your emotions you know you are going to have a problem uh and uh, uh, you're gonna be angry with something you're gonna be depressed you're gonna be anxious you're gonna be sad whatever yeah and then you can intervene Mm -hmm. like box breathing one example wim hof breathing one example but you can interrupt that feedback loop yeah the feelings are coming from a reaction in your body. So interrupt that reaction. Yeah. So when I say just relax, that's probably the wrong way to do it with mm-hmm. somebody. Maybe it's let's take a few breaths here yeah. or something and try and try and calm down the situation because just yeah. relax just sends people. Sometimes me just to relax. Like, oh, just relax. I, I can't just relax. I know. But I can intervene in the situation. Yeah. And with, with the breathing, it's one example. Uh, food is another example. Uh, there's millions and millions of things you, c- you could do. But that's the point to not be condescending. It's not don't let things body you. And that's not what you're saying. Yeah. As in, like you've said there, look inwards. And people are going, how the fuck am I supposed to I look know, inwards? I know, well, Look inwards doesn't mean just look inwards. It yeah. means find some techniques that help you mm-hmm. listen to yourself. Yeah. That could be meditation. Yeah. It could be breathing. It could be going for a walk. It could be going for a swim. It could be going to the gym. For me, going to the gym was a big one because I found when I was in the gym, all of the external input was gone. Yeah. And I would get into this zone where my head was so quiet, I was forced not to... T- I, well, my head went really quiet because I was focusing on the activity, but that gave me a period of 10 or 15 minutes afterwards yeah. where I had this calm, this peace. So I always felt good after the gym. Yeah. In the gym, not so much, but after the gym, you have this peace because your head's been cleared and you start to think about things you generally wouldn't think about. How do I feel about exactly. that day and stuff like that? Yeah. So for reflect, me... Reflect, always reflect. Reflection, yeah. yeah that, and I didn't even know I was reflecting. I just yeah. knew that after the gym, as well as the endorphins, I just felt good because I was able to reflect a little bit about my day. And the things that... This was the big one for me. If I'd had a really bad day and there was huge problems in the day, after the gym, I was thinking about that. I was going, do you know what? 
they weren't actually that bad. Mm, exactly. And I'm actually Puts fine. things in perspective. It's perspective was huge for me. Yeah. So that was my thing. And when I, when, I, when I realized that's what was happening, I started doing other things. Now, um, again, it's, it takes practice to actually implement these full time in your life. And I'm working on that. I'm on the journey. Um, but when you, the more of these little practices you add in, the more you realize I can actually influence how I really feel here yeah. and all the external amount. I can be tired and I can be sad and I can be pissed off and I can be hungry and it can be all these things. And that's fine. And I go through those cycles, but on, on a deeper level, I can actually influence that myself mm-hmm. by putting practices in place. Yep. And, think and that's a tool like the gym was like a tool. It was a tool. Do, yeah. it was yeah. a tool for me. Yeah. And this is, again, why I do this podcast, because yeah. I truly believe a lot of people struggle, including me and you and everybody. Yeah. But the more people we the more of these discussions we have, the more hopefully people will realize well, maybe maybe they've listened to all the episodes so far or a million other podcasts and they have found nothing. But maybe they've just listened to one thing you've mm-hmm. said today and they go, that sounds like I would really, that sounds like it would work for me. Yeah. They might go and they might do it and it might work and they might go, I've changed my life. Yeah. And you didn't change your life and I didn't change your life and the podcast didn't change your life. But we've exposed them to a piece of information yeah. that they've now utilized. Something will hopefully click and that at might, some point. Yeah, and that's that what happened clicking for me. Moment. You know? That happened for you, happened yeah. for me. Now, yeah. I was given the baby and it happened for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for other people, it happens for a million different reasons. Yeah. There might never be a click moment. So don't wait for the click moment. Exactly. Start practicing small little things. And like it's it's almost become cliche now because a lot of people who come on this podcast or who come on other podcasts or who run their own podcasts, are doing that for a reason because they've had a click moment maybe or they've had a realization or a trauma that they've managed to deal with yeah. and they're very very aware because you have this and enlightenment is i hate the word just like you hate no, the word yeah. it's so cliche people roll their eyes oh yeah. they think they know everything yeah, exactly. they think they're on a different plane no yeah. actually when you're enlightened you feel like you know nothing you know nothing, nothing. however mm. you're able to look around at everybody else yeah. and go <laughs> we all know nothing yeah, and yeah. you're not sitting there going oh, i know something you people don't know yeah, exactly. which is what i always feel very yeah. very cautious about when people oh you run a podcast do you oh you know, you're talking to such and such way and you get this kind of eye roll thing yeah. and you're like it doesn't mean i know any more than anybody else yeah. now i can just see that we all we were all in this struggle together and there's a way out yeah. or at least there's a way forward but people don't like to hear that because unless they're ready for that change it's there's resistance there's and I wasn't ready for it for years I as like, I said yeah. I was thinking about it for years but sorry can I just give like a yeah, one, t- one tip about what you were talking about there oh, we love tips we love uh, takeaways no it's <laughs> just um, the food I was eating I, it was actually incredible how disassociated my mind and body was so the food I was eating, what I was not relating that to how I actually felt, how it was making me feel, which is ridiculous. So can I urge people, <laughs> when you eat something, how does it make you feel? Is it serving your body or is it harming your body? Um, And it's just so, like keeping a food diary like is, is huge because there might be, you might have be eating something in your diet that is causing some type of reaction or it's kind of um a lot of people have this thing called dysbiosis i know robbie mm. talks about it before it's an imbalance of bad bacteria to your good bacteria yeah. in your gut and that can like literally cause so many things depression anxiety um uh, inflammatory conditions le- leaky gut as well intestinal permeability like your gut, you have to have to look after your gut because this is where your immune system is and where a lot of your neurotransmitters are are produced, like your ser- serotonin and your dopamine. So if you are feeling like depressed or anxious and you can't really like pinpoint it to like a trauma or like something specific, it's probably just like uh, your gut, to be honest. Yeah. And But it's funny because stress and lack of sleep and everything affects your gut health. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm really like a proponent for like looking after your gut because, you know, yeah. it's it's basically everything. Yeah. So, and sorry, another thing that's super, super important is your thyroid. It's like your master gland. And it's it's mad because mo- we have one of the highest rates of hypothyroidism in, in the world because, uh, you know, it's controversial to say this, but there's a big association between fluoride and um thyroid health thyroid issue, yeah. because it displaces the iodine in your in your thyroid yeah, 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 yeah. um so that's something to look out for and if people are suffering from hypothyroidism they can actually feel suicidal yeah do you know yeah um i think you know i we work from the functional medical 
medicine perspective. So we take like a, a health condition and we're like detectives. OK, what's going on there? Is it an, it could, it's something like really severe? Literally could just be a nutrient deficiency. Like B vitamins, they they're amazing for your your nervous system. You know, are you lacking in B vitamins or do you have too much or what's going on? Is your is your gut bacteria just kind of all out of whack? Do you have a parasite? Yeah. You know, all these things we kind of test for. And, you know, own, own Lacey and Robbie talk about this a lot, but it's just it could be a huge, huge part of the puzzle. But again, it's not just food. As I said, stress and sleep and yeah. environments can really can really um, trigger that. And we're exposed to so many like toxins now and they're, it's all kind of normalized. Now, I suffer from um, like allergies to like perfume sprays, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's fairly bad. And from a functional medicine perspective, that would be a sulfation problem. Um, so I don't know if it's like I'm kind of hypersensitive to kind of like smells and sounds, that kind of thing anyway, which I'm get, getting better at. But guys, please be mindful um, that these things that you're wearing not only is it harmful for yourself and it, it will like attack your nervous and your endocrine system and women are w- I, I think it's my opinion one of the reasons women are having such problem with their periods these days mm. is all the um, kind of chemicals and junk that are in these beauty products now you can get like um, ones that are free from them but having a huge, huge impact on your overall health. And because it's so subtle and it like happens over a long period of time, you wouldn't really kind of... You wouldn't associate it with You the, wouldn't associate it with... And it's like... And I think you... From a kind of like... A, I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, I'm, I'm being mindful towards others. If you're going to spray like very strong fragrances... You're, you are invading like someone's kind of personal space. I know people don't think of it like that. They're just like, they put on a spray because they want to smell nice and I would never hold it against someone. But, you know, people do have allergies to these things and they are really super har- harmful to you. So you kind of have to like mindful of it. Yeah. Um, and very you can have very, very subtle health conditions because of it, you know. And I think I think we'll be looking back in 20 years, these products and be like, Sam, what the hell are we doing? How are these legal? Like I don't know. we look back at cigarettes now. Like we'd even look back at talc. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Harmless. Yeah. And you come across like, a, you know, a conspiracy theorist or like you're just mad or you're just hypersensitive or whatever. That's fine. So I wonder, is it just like my body is just like really aware of things that aren't supposed to be like yeah. there? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, you've started listening, I think. Yeah, that yeah. You've started listening to your yeah, body yeah. is probably a big part of that, yeah. yeah. But that that that's the core point you've just made there about all of the stuff we talk about. Because like Wim Hof breathing is fine and meditation is fine and walking is fine and, and all this high level supplementation and stuff is fine. Again, just going back to the point that Colin made, this normalization thing, it starts off with the basics. Are you getting enough sleep? Yep. Are you eating right? Mm. Are you stressed out of your mind? Yeah. They're kind of the, the, the three big ones. And stress can be anything from environmental stress to Absolutely. emotional That's stress. That's what I mean by the stress. environment. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, awesome. So uh, always bring it back to this one simple point. If you are in a position when you're not feeling good or something, something is going on about your emotions or your life or anything, anything about you doesn't feel good because people are very quick to do this. I'm, I'm feeling down. It's depression. It's anxiety. Yeah. And that's a medical condition that yeah, needs to be yeah. treated by a doctor. And yeah. I'm not saying that there are not cases that need to be handled by medical professionals. I'm not saying that at all because there are. However, what's causing those problems? I believe and you believe, yeah. and I know a huge amount of people believe that in a vast majority of these cases of mood swings, emotions, stress and all that kind of stuff, it's a combination of a few baseline factors Bad nutrition being yes. the big one, yeah. poor sleep being another big one, yeah. and stress being another one from yeah. this crazy life that we've built for ourselves, yeah. which has loads of amazing things about it. Like we're sitting here now with cool microphones and a nice deal. Yeah. So there's good things about it. So I'm not saying we should all go live on an island. Yeah. But the only way to really understand what's really going on with you and not going and going on a journey of taking all sorts of medications to counteract the effects yes. of the problems. 
which is all we're dealing with there, yeah. symptoms, we're managing yeah, symptoms yeah. with medications in, in the vast majority of cases, is to go and get yourself tested yeah. and talk to somebody who knows yeah. and find out where you are right now. That's exactly. the only way mm-hmm. I think you can make a decision about what to do going forward. I think so. And I'm always very careful giving advice. I love I love tips and hints and things people can try, yeah. but I'm always very careful giving advice to people on on because I'm not the expert to go to. Now, you, you are in a field where you, you would be considered very, very well qualified to give advice to people, but you're still very careful about giving advice to people on a blanket Absolutely. kind of uh, basis yep. because one of these things that works for me might not work for you. Mm-hmm. So yep. it's very important to know exactly where you are and yep. then you can make your decisions about what to do. And I promise people that when you go through that process, if you go to down the right avenues and you get your blood done and you understand yep. where you are now, Yep. And you make your own choices about what you're going to do going forward, be that tiny changes to your diet or to your lifestyle or maybe not wearing a perfume because you're allergic to it or, or whatever those changes are, you're going to start to reap those rewards pretty quickly. Yep. You're going to start to realize I'm making small changes here to very basic, easy things and I'm feeling 10 percent better mm-hmm. and 10 percent better than 20 percent is 30 percent. And that's a 30 percent improvement. Yeah, exactly. That's huge. Yeah. Um, and you, you'll, you'll, you'll then start to find other things in those same categories. And then you'll, you'll monitor yourself and you'll get retested and you realize, hold on, the, the, the building blocks are improving here. No wonder I'm feeling better. And you might never get to a point where you need to supplement with vitamin D and vitamin K and all yeah, this yeah. kind of stuff. You might just make small changes that have big effects in your body. But the only way to know is to get tested and figure out what this, the problem is and not be following all the trends on Instagram and yep. stuff like that because there could be some great stuff there and you might mm-hmm. you might do some of that stuff yep. but you're, you're throwing darts in the dark un, exactly. unless you know what your starting point is. Exactly and I like the way you said like the 20 or 30% because if someone even feels even that tiny bit better it gives them the motivation oh, to keep shoot. going. It's like oh I had a little taste of what it feels like not to feel like shit yeah. and then you just keep huge. going and going until yeah. you get to a point where you want. And it, for me, it's it's never ending. Like you just, I'm There's all, no 100%. I'm all yeah. about like um, growth, you know, like in yeah. development. And I'll, I'll keep doing it for as long as I can. I'm sure you've worked with clients before and even friends and family maybe um, who, who have undergone some sort of journey like this. Like I worked in, in functional medicine clinic for years yeah. and I was just observing these people coming in. And I, I know I, I, I've told this before, but people who could be, they could look like they're at the top of their game. Yeah. The old super high executives and, and at athletes and guys in the public eye who you look at them and go, oh, man, that person's doing really, really well. Yeah. And they are 20 or 30 percent. They're miserable. Yeah. Absolutely stressed out of their minds. They're depressed. They're anxious. They have fertility issues, hormone issues, all sorts of stuff going on. And then they make a small change. They get tested and they make yeah. a small change. Some of these people do extreme things, but some people just do a very small mm-hmm. amount of change to their diet, for example, or to their exercise protocol. And then they come back in a few weeks later and you're looking at them going, this is a different person. Yeah. Like they're a completely different yeah. person. And then that person starts to tell you things like, I've, I've changed my job or yeah. I've, I'm in a new relationship or I've rekindled my yeah. relationship or I've spoken to my kid that I haven't yeah. spoken to in six years or oh, my psoriasis has completely yeah. disappeared. I don't have pain all the time yeah. or I'm not tired. Yeah. I'm writing that novel down yeah, that I, yeah. I told you I wanted to write for the last 10 years mm. and I couldn't like multiply that by a million. They're the stories that I heard. You've probably yeah. heard similar things yeah. um, with, with clients of yours and people yeah. that you know. Um, so and it's fear. It's just about letting go. It's about letting it's go. It's just fear. Yeah. I think anything that stops us doing anything in life is just fear. Yeah. But if you just say... And we don't want to be judged. We don't want people to think fear, there's you know? something wrong with you because yeah. you don't feel good. There's a yeah, stigma yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, it's an Irish thing as well, and uh, an old Irish male thing too. Ara, get on with it! Like you're grand, mm. you're grand. Yeah, yeah. There's a stigma surrounding yep. not feeling good, and you don't want to be categorised as mentally unstable. Yeah. Or you've got a mental health it's issue. Absolutely, and it's very disempowering if you go to your doctor and you're not feeling a hundred percent. But the doctor's like, "Well, you know, we've done this test and that test, and you're grand. You're fine." It's like, "Well, I'm not fine because I came to you." Yeah, <laughs> why exactly. am I here? Like, and I think that's why people go and get like, you know, it's it sounds so like bad to say alternative therapies as if they're like not as good as the Stigma. like yeah yeah people hear alternative holistic yeah yeah oh it's airy fairy yeah. yeah and like i can't say that i wasn't like that years yeah. ago as well like i probably it's was changing Dan, thank god it is tra- yeah. and look believe me it's changing you can yeah, see yeah. it and i can see it yeah. and you said when you came back to ireland you were expecting resistance and you got it and yeah, you, yeah. you still do get it and it is there yeah but there are so many more people and i think there's an element of desperation in this as well people are desperate for an answer People are feeling worse and they're desperate for an answer and they know they're not getting the answers. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's a, a bit of a light being shone on the deception. Yeah. Because there is, you said conspiracy theory earlier, there is an element of decept, high level deception here yeah. because 
it's uh, they want to sell us more stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not a I'm not a tinfoil hat guy hiding yeah. under my closet. Like I yeah. engage with the world and yeah. I buy things and I like yeah. why I, I I buy into the, the capitalist side of things yeah. to, to a certain extent. Me too. I play the game, but I I like to have an awareness about myself as well. And again, people roll noise enlightenment. Well, no, it's not about that. I I am happier engaging in all this stuff. I'm not freaked out by the yeah. world or the environment or anything like that. Yeah. I acknowledge that there are things there that are not good for me and I'll make my decisions surrounding those. Yeah. And I'll acknowledge that there are people there, including at a governmental level and a yeah. corporation level, that are not making decisions for my health. Yes. They're making decisions for their wallet. Yes. And that's not conspiracy. Yeah. But once you acknowledge that, yeah. you can then engage with Just them. acknowledge it. Don't get obsessed with Don't it. Get obsessed I did with it. get obsessed with so it for, I went, so I went for off the deep end. a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, do you know, I was actually crying having conversations with people. I was like, because they don't believe me. It's like, yeah. no, it's not my job to convince anyone. Nope. No. Just let that go. It's not, it's, you know, yeah. I can only do what I can do and that's it. Yeah, and you'll be happier like yeah, that. Yeah. And if there's a lot more people like that, they, like, wh- why did why did we, why did we immediately, you thought I was some kind of car junkie, yeah, football yeah. playing jock, why did we engage lad. so well? <laughs> because very quickly you, re- yeah, lad, Jack the yeah. lad, uh, oh, John the lad, was it John? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but very quickly you realised, hold on, this guy is on a similar kind of a journey. He's yeah. exploring the same kind of things. Yeah. And now I'm having that experience when people come in here or when I meet people at parties and stuff. A lot more people are in their own way and they might be on their own journey are engaging in some sort of self-exploration or trying to figure out the world. And that's natural for a human to find out what your place in the world is. But they're going a little bit deeper because there's resources now available yep. with people like you and people like me and people like Owen and people like Colin and all these different people yes. who are out there saying, guys, this is real. Yeah. Like, and be very aware and careful of negative energy and people saying, oh, that's a load of shite or whatever. Like, if you're curious about it, like surround yourself with with them type of people. Uh, be, be wary of other people's energy and your own energy. What kind of energy are you giving yeah. out there? Is a negative? Is it kind of like, yeah, you know, you have um, to be very careful of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I, there was a conversation recently I was involved in exactly like this. If you're giving out this negative energy all the time, even if you're doing it for reasons you think are pure, or or you're defending your your yeah. right to be yourself, yeah, other people pick up on that. And it's not to say that you have to be what other people want you to be. Ah, the opposite, actually, you have to be what you're happy with. Yeah. But if you want to engage with the world and other people, there has to be a compassion. And you mm-hmm. mentioned the word compassion and an understanding that other people are on their own journey yeah. that might look like your yeah, journey. Exactly. And they might be going the same way you're going. Yeah. And if you want to engage with that person, there is a trade off. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you compromise any of your own beliefs or values yeah. or you be subservient to other people. You yeah. try and please other people. Yes, don't. Not do at that. all. Yeah. But there has to be an acknowledgement that I have to engage with the world here. And we won't we won't get into the social justice kind of thing. No. But there's a huge amount of young people who are being told that it's your way or the highway and mm. people need to respect yeah. and your you're world. And you're a bad person if you don't. And if you're, you're a not bad under, person yeah. if you don't respect your world. Yeah. I believe if somebody is a young person and they're struggling with their identity or who they are, yeah. they should be supported and they should yeah. be respected. But they shouldn't be told that their belief should dominate everybody else's belief. Mm-hmm. What, and that's what's happening. Yeah. And that's dangerous. And we yeah. don't want to go down the political no, no, side of things. But it's very easy. Maybe we'll have another podcast. We will definitely about have that. another podcast <laughs> on that. Yeah. But I think the, the the central point that we're trying to get to is be yourself, engage with yourself, understand yourself yeah. and put good energy out there. But be very cautious about how other people pick that up. And yeah, exactly. A really important caveat just to finish this point sometimes other people aren't in a place and they'll be very close to you yeah. aren't in a place where they're ready for their journey you have to respect that and if yeah. there's, but they also have to respect that you're on your journey because mm. sometimes people can see you developing into this person and you're a lot more happy in who your life who does she think she is who does that person think she they're? wasn't like that they're making me look bad yeah, yeah. they're changing oh they listen and this is the they listen yeah, yeah. to the Joe Rogan podcast yeah, and they well, think they're it. better than me that's now it. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and they're not ready for the, the yeah. frogs in the bucket thing yeah. frogs will they don't want the frog that, that one frog is trying to get out of the bucket they pull that frog yeah. back down oh, crabs in the bucket there's the crabs in the bucket so. they'll always pull that crab back yeah. down so be aware of that yeah. be conscious of it um, and guess what a light bulb moment was for me realising that judgement is an energy it's yeah. not even like a thought. You're actually, if you're judging someone, you think they can't feel that. You're looking at them a certain way. You're, yeah. Your body language is a certain way. You're, the, the energy you're giving off is I a can't believe way. the judgment that I was like, that I was bringing to yeah. myself and others. It was just absolutely ridiculous. Even just like walking down the street. Oh, look at them. Look at, look at yeah, that. Yeah, they're yeah. this, they're that. That's a real Irish thing as well, isn't it? It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not doing it anymore. It doesn't serve me and it doesn't serve others. It doesn't serve anybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so just we're we're, we're flying in and we're an yeah. hour and a half into this yeah. now, um, but 
in terms of what you now do to help other people. Yeah. So you're a nutritional therapist, mm -hmm. you're a Wim Hof instructor. Yeah. And your goal is to try and help people with everything we've just spoken about yeah. there. So a nutritional therapist, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to come into you and you're going to dissect my diet and tell me what the best diet is. No way. You're going to try and help me on my journey to find the things that work for me. Yeah. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. That's the nail on the head. I can't actually describe it any better oh, than you just said. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can have that one. Put it yeah. on a t-shirt. Um, but it's a very, it's it's holistic. I take everything into consideration. Okay. And I keep honing on about relationships only because we interact in relationships every single day. Okay. And you have to kind of like make sure that you are in the right type of relationships. The ones that kind of like complement you. That kind of, that you can serve well, that they can serve well. It's, and as I said, expectations is another thing, but make sure you're surrounding yourself with people that want to, that are happy to see you grow and develop and they're not like jealous or like kind of like... The crabs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> They're not the crabs. <laughs> it's so important yeah. because, um, you know, sometimes when I do like these retreats or like the Wim Hofs or something, people are like, that's it, I'm quitting my job. You know, I'm leaving my marriage, I'm doing whatever. Oh, and, yeah, you know, they, they are extreme. But Jesus, sometimes that's maybe what you need to do. Yeah. Like really, really assess what it is you want and need in life. And if that means them things, even like moving country, whatever it is, just you just have to do it because yeah. you only get this life. Well, maybe you get loads of lives. Maybe you get loads of lives. Who knows? Well, yeah. <laughs> this consciousness, uh, you know, like make sure it's the the best it can be I think okay yeah yeah that's beautiful I think that's yeah. a lovely point to, yeah. to finish up on yeah. yeah Maria it has been enlightening and mm -hmm. it's been enjoyable as every conversation we always have is I just want to thank you very much I know it's not thank easy you, sometimes to come on and do podcasts and kind of put your information out there because mm. there is a lot of resistance yeah uh, but for me that was massively valuable it always mm -hmm. is I hope the listeners get some good value out of that too and um, if people want to get in contact with you where can they find Maria Connolly okay so on Instagram it's Maria Connolly Health uh, the slogan is live, uh, breathe deep, live well. Breathe deep, live well, lovely. And it's on uh, Facebook as well. I do have a website, but do not go to that yet because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's under construction at okay. the moment. Um, I'm actually holding a Wim Hof um, workshop in Blue and Scaries next week, the 22nd. Oh, wow, brilliant. So if you want to let go of fear and like kind of like get on top of your health, get on top of whatever it is you need to do. I'll teach you the breathing method, like a method, a tool that you can use every day. And I'll get you into a nice bath and you'll be <laughs> completely fine with it. Something that I thought I'd never do. But once people get into it, you just feel like such a boss after you're like, yes, I can do it. And it just it, gives yeah. you like this motivation and this kind of like will to keep going and to do whatever you need to do. Beautiful. Yeah, so well, Maria, um, best of luck with the with with the classes. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Dan. And we are definitely doing this again. Yes, <laughs> sure. See you. And that's episode eleven, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much to Maria Connolly. If you want to learn more about anything we spoke about on today's episode, you can head over to www.primal.ie forward slash Maria Connolly for all of the links, the show notes, and the contact details. If you enjoyed the show. And you want to hear more, give us a follow on Instagram at Primal Pro, P R Y M A L P R O. Same on Facebook. We're also on Twitter at Primal P. And please, guys, if you enjoyed it, like I said at the start, please subscribe to the podcast and give us a rating on Apple Podcasts if you think we deserve it. That's all for today. See you next time.